This is the multi brain. This is the actual multi. This is the model that has the touch screen on it. So you can get this without the touch screen. Saves the grower about $1,700. But um, then they have to add their own monitor, keyboard, and mouse. So I actually find the touch screen to be really helpful because you can get right here on it, you know, at the side of the, the grow and be able to do anything that you need. Um, but it isn't, it's a sort of an upgrade. So the unit itself, I'm gonna go through the software later, but right now, when you're setting this up, the way that the multi connects is that it's a daisy chain. So everything loops into the next component and it all connects with Cat5. And you can have up to a mile of Cat5 per multi. So this is the inside of the multi. Very simple, you've got your power supply and you have your the first start of your Cat5 daisy chain. Um, this is also where you would put a, another power supply if you wanted to run a weather station. So the weather station is more for greenhouse, um, you know, things that have vents and need weather vanes where you know about rain and uh, wind directions and things like that. Um, and that's really all that you do. You also have an ethernet in here so that you can plug this in directly to the internet so that you can set up all of your remote access access options. The cover is just there to protect it because these are designed to be, you know, in greenhouses and, you know, and yeah, where it's humid and dirty and all of that. Yeah. All that the Cat5 is doing is connecting each of the components so that they're all communicating with the brain. So we'll show you. So this is our output module. So the output module, and I've taken this off so you can see, the output module is where you're going to wire in all of your like your peristaltic pumps. This is where you're going to wire in your dehumidifiers, your lights, your fans, your ACs, your, your CO2s, whatever it would be. And you can have 10 out, you can have 10 different items on this one alone. So for example, if you have a room that has uh, one reservoir and it has an eight part dosing, you know, eight different parts, and then you have lights, CO2, fans, a AC, heater, all that, you're going to need two of these output modules for that room because you can only, that would be one peristaltic each. And they have three settings. There's either on, off, or auto. So if you leave it in auto, that means that the multi is telling it when to turn on and off. If you just want to force dose like your, all your pumps to make sure that they're running or just make sure your lights are turning on, just turn it to on. And if you don't want the multi to be able to use it regardless, just turn it to off. So sometimes, you know, if you've got people working in there, you may turn off the CO2. If you've got, you know, if you're changing out your tanks, you want to turn off all your peristaltic pumps. So this is the output module. These are, uh, this is a way to wire into the output module. So the multi works on 24 volt AC or DC. If you're using the peristaltic pumps, we recommend that you go DC because all of our pumps are DC and it just makes it easier if all the power source is the same for troubleshooting purposes down the road. But this is a 24 volt DC relay box. This wires into the output module and anything that plugs in with a 120 can plug into here. Now, in a lot of the situations, you're going to have 240 volt AC, 240 volt CO2. You're going to have big units. Those units all have thermostats on them and we cut the thermostat off and we take the two common in the live wire from the thermostat and we wire it directly into the, the, the output module and then the multi can turn it on and off because you want the multi to be your thermostat. You, if you're going to use a unit like this, you don't want one or two things to be running on their own and then have the multi running everything else. It's just not the most efficient way to do it. You can have a like like the you know uh, like a master light controller that has 24 or 48 lights and it will usually still have a 120 plug on a trigger cable that can plug right into here. So this is a really easy way to do the 24 volt DC. In a lot of situations, you're going to have an electrician on hand who's making contactor panels for you and he's going to hardwire in all of this and have it all you know set up. But I wanted to show that there is something pretty simple. Um, so then from your output module and we'll take the covers off and show you the wiring in a minute. But from the output module, now we're daisy chaining into our remote sensor box and the remote sensor box is where our pH probe and our EC probe is and this is what's going to be monitoring your reservoir for dosing purposes. This also has a temperature probe that can be put into it if you're interested in media temperature um, and, and that's not, I didn't bring one of those with me but you do have that kit that can plug into here. This is now daisy chaining into our environment sensor and this environment sensor monitors your light levels, your CO2, your temperature and your humidity. You can see that you have your temperature and your humidity sensor 
your light sensors here, your CO2 sensors in here. These are meant to hang in the canopy of the plants. But I usually recommend that you don't put them directly under a light, but between two lights. Average. Yeah. And you, because you really want a nice average of what the plants are feeling and right in the canopy so that you're getting that. You want the temperature and the humidity for the plants, not the wall and not the ceiling. You want what they're going through. Um, the light level measurement is great because it can not only tell you if your lights are on or off, which also tells you when the CO2 can and can't work because some people don't want CO2 at night. Some people want it to be different at night. Um, but also you can monitor the health of your bulbs because you can watch them deteriorate. Yep, and, and then you know when it's time to replace them. Um, and obviously temperature, humidity, and CO2 are all really important. This unit can run up to eight remote sensor boxes and it can have well, I don't even think that there's a max on how many output modules it can do. It has, the software can run eight reservoirs basically. Now we recommend that you don't do more than eight parts per reservoir. When I say parts, I mean nutrients, additives, and pH. So that's usually an A and a B and a pH down and then like five additives when people do that. It can run eight peristaltic pumps for eight different reservoirs. So a total of 64 pumps of like, you know, you've got veg, you've got a couple blooms, you know, and you've, you know, whatever you've got, you've got different feed schedules for each one of them. Now, all of these components, there's, this is basically an example of pretty much everything that our guys are gonna need. You know, we do have a paired output module that's more for greenhouses, opening and closing events and sidewalls and things like that. Um, these components, daisy chain together like i said earlier you can get up to a mile of cat five so that is i mean in a big warehouse that gives you a lot of room to move around the nice part about the daisy chain is let's say for example we put one environment sensor in every room you know and then we start realizing that the plants maybe are a little uneven on different ends of the room. Maybe that room really should have two environment sensors in it so you're getting a more average that way all you've got to do is you just cut the cat five wire in a new one and there you go. You don't have to take everything down, you're not rewiring everything again. And then we just go to the unit, we tell it we have one more environment sensor and it's all hooked up. These are all of your outputs. So these here are what's telling each of these what they run. So I put in the relay box that we always have a common and then we have the top and the bottom. So if I plugged in the CO2 here, I would consider this the output two on the output module and this address is zero. So the address for the CO2 in this output module will be 02. Now my second output module, I'm gonna turn this dial to one, and then it would be 1.2. And I can go up to, well, there's a 10, 15, it looks like 15 of these um, different addresses. So it's all bus address is how you tell the unit what you have connected to it. So every one of these will have its own add, like own dial address and then where you put the different outputs is what you tell the unit. So it knows that when the CO2 in this compartment goes down to click on that output, right? And then we just, here's all of our communications. So the same communication that was in there comes into here, back out and into here and then from here and into here. So just daisy chains together. Uh, you can put <laughs> recipes and things into here because you can save all of your settings. So anything I can save, I can email you. And the, the data logging on a unit like this, the ability to prove to anybody who asks what you've done, what your environment looked like, the stage of the, you know, every stage of the plant's life, this is what you need. It's the only thing that you're gonna get that's gonna give you that type. Yeah. So it, when we were talking about this, so basically that's how that output module works. So I said on output module zero in output mo and output two is my CO2. Okay, and then we always have to hit activate, it's what locks it in. And so then, you know, we can go to our lighting and it's gonna say add new. I have, oh, I've just added four of them. But you would put the name here, so I would say grow room one and that could be output module zero, output three. And then I would go grow room two and that would be output module one, three. Whatever it is, so you can do, I mean, you can see, this is, I mean, you just can connect just about anything to it and anything that you're telling it to run. Now, if I had said I had vents and hydronic rings and all that, that would have all popped up here too and I could tell it where it was. So this is my configuration. This is just the basics of how you configure the unit. So I have a continuous 
dosing, that's most, that's basically just a continuous dosed reservoir. So it's all the deep water culture. It's just NFT, ebb and flow, you know, anybody who just has a body of water. Yeah, any type of recirculating. Um, and then when you go in, and so I can add another one if I had, Oh, let's see here a little bit. Let me, there we go. So then that would be grow room two. And so that's how you add on your diff, your different ones and see. So you have up here grow room one. So this is like the end of the daytime, um, my time period. So I have a day and a night for dosing because you may want different feed schedules between the day and the night, depending on how your plants feed. It looks like a lot, but it's not really difficult. That's the point behind it, is trying to make it so that when you read this, you understand what you're looking at. So like what's installed? Nutrient dosing? pH dosing? Do you have a circulating pump in there? Um, are there stir pumps? How do you want the mode to be? And then you can go through, um, so like water system to tell it the, you know, the capacity. So you can say, you know, I've got a thousand gallon res or whatever you may have. If you want to check your source water, you can also test source water. Um, yeah, so that you actually know what's coming into the system. And then, you know, you've got your sensors connected to it. So like right now it knows that I have one sensor on here. Um, I'm not using a solar sensor, but the solar part of this just on your greenhouse side of things, which is really cool. And then we've got just the, the readings page. Um, so like here's the get over to irrigation. Do I have that? Uh, yeah. Well, I don't have it in anything right now, but it's, it's giving me a pH of 6.9. And the EC probe is also your temperature probe to monitor the temperature of your water gotcha. so that you can make sure that your water is not getting too hot and you can run chillers if you need to run a chiller. So if it starts to get too hot. Now, find that most of the time in grow rooms, not that big of a deal because it is so environmentally controlled. But if you have a tank house on the side of a grow room, that can make it, you know, they may not be as temperature controlled as the room itself, right, depending on sometimes. where your tank is. The pump can get really hot and so you know you may want to just well what you can start with here is you can start monitoring that and then if you see one where all of a sudden it's getting like why is that one res way hotter than the rest there's something wrong with the pump like something's going wrong replace it. So there's a lot of the information is used to make better decisions about how to spend your money and how to spend your time. Where is my time needed today? Well it's not needed in any of those reservoirs but that three need my help. Okay cool that's a whole lot easier than going to every single one of them yeah. you know. So this is your readings page. You've got your history screen, which I don't think this is gonna give me a whole lot, but I wanna show you this. Okay, so you think this is cool. You wanna see what this thing monitors? I get all excited about this. Okay, so we're gonna set series, which is where you tell it what to do. Now, this is not so important for us because this is your site measurements. This is your outdoor. So this is if you have the weather station. This is everything that it monitors outside. But let's go to your climate, okay? So this is our basic grow room climate. So we're monitoring humidity, air temperature, solar radiation, solar par, VPD, dew point, CO2, grow room cooling targets, grow room heating targets, HAF fans, dehumidifying and lighting. It monitors in the cooler, current position of the cooler, is it on or is it off? In the CO2, is it on or is it off? Everything that you connect in here, you can monitor. So let's say under here, I want to monitor the air temp, the CO2, and the humidity, just for you know ease of this. Irrigation, we got grow room one. This is everything it monitors in your res. So you've got the flow rates, the calculated flow rates, your water source levels, your accumulated volume of water, your pH, your nutrient, your targets, your dose rates, any type of correction it's made, all of the different stations, your accumulated solar. I mean, this thing does. So this is, so, oh, and then I have to choose a date range. So I'm gonna say for the last hour. So remember that this isn't monitoring anything right now, but this can monitor everything. And all of this can be exported into spreadsheets, into email, whatever you need to send off. You can monitor your date range, so you can set it from 30 minutes to up to three days you can look at. Um, you can look at a specific day. So you're out of town for the weekend and you know, somebody says something happened on Saturday, go into that Saturday and see what happened. Nobody is getting away with anything. Yeah. Because this is going to tell on them. Right. Right. So just not because you want to have to tell on people, but yeah. So the thing I just want to talk about is the admin. So you have access control on a unit like this. There's three different levels. So the first is that somebody who can just access readings, right? So a guy can come in, see the readings, right? The user can change basic settings, temperature, CO2, real basic settings. Then you have one who can do all settings. And then you have the admin who can actually go into the background and change who has access. So it's the highest level. It's the one who can do the debug, the technical support. So you can have a lot of employees 
and you can set up who gets to touch what when. So you can have people who can log in and touch anything that they want to but can't make a single change, which is great because when you have a lot of employees working in a lot of different rooms, you do not want them all to have access to this thing. Well, everybody's going to go, oh, I think the CO2 needs to be higher. No, I think the CO2 should be smaller. No, 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 no. So this is a really good one. And then basically this unit can be accessed via the internet, which I'll show you here in a few minutes. What we do, so you basically, you go to myautogrow.com from any device, so you can do it on your iPad, your iPhone, I mean, and it's not just an iPad, it's any Sorry. type of web browser, so uh, anything that you can get onto the web with. Yes, it, well, you've got your login, and this is, um, this is all secure because it's all web-based, and so it's your, it's your, it's an email and a password, and then remember you can set up who has access to it. Mm. So now what you're going to see when I, it's backed up by Autogrow, okay. so Autogrow backs it up every night, um, which means that if anything happens, and like we had, like let's say for example, I mean, God forbid one of these things failed. Mm -hmm. When we sent you the new one, we'd have it updated with the last day's settings. So when you log in, it's gonna say, welcome to your dashboard. And it's gonna say, you know, that you have how many devices you have online. So for most of our, your growers would say one device online. And basically let's just like go here, for example, we're gonna look at a device. So this is just telling you the status, um, if there was any issues in it, if there's been any orders placed, um, okay. So this is what you would log into, right? And so this is what you would see. Um, I see I'm seeing staff access because I can log into that, but you're uh, like the staff wouldn't normally see that. When you click on full screen, here you are. So you're at the multi-controller. It's the exact same screen. So I am working on this as though I was right here. Almost like log me in. Yep, exactly. And so um, I'm already logged into this. So right now, this is a grow room in a multi-tier um, sort of experimentation with LEDs that they're doing right now over in the UK and so they're te they're just checking everything and I and so every time that you go into your history screen this is your history screen is determined by your login so I've logged in before and this is what I want to see in here because I like the way that it looks and it's a really simple one it's just multi-tiers so you get in so this is like so their CO2 they have uh, the say like the start um, you know and then their day start their end their end um, of course, they're in Celsius the way that they do it, but they have night and day, you know, uh, different types of humidities. So you can, I mean, this unit, you can just make it do anything you need it to do. Just so you can see some main system settings, so climate settings are here. So we'll say, okay, grow room one, we have simple management. Um, when we go in here, this is all your settings. So set points for cooling, for heating, for, um, you know, your relative humidity, your ramping of, you know, ramping up of humidity and ramping down. You have, uh, let's say on the CO2. So CO2, oh, it says it's disabled. Um, let me activate this. Under admin, go to locale. And under locale, you set your time zone. And this is also where you're going to set your temperature, velocity, flow rate, conductivity, volume, solar radiation, energy. Oh, Celsius, Fahrenheit, yeah. So here we just go to Fahrenheit and then save. Yeah, it really should be on EC. I mean, they could do CF if they want to. Um, let me see. Oh, no, they put it in there. So you got it. So you can use anything that you want to. Remember that all TDS, that all of ours anyways, are all based on EC. It's just a calculation from EC. Yep. So, you know, whatever the, the grower wants to do, we're measuring an EC and then we're just telling him a number he can understand. That's all that we're doing here. But yeah, so that's how you make the changes on it. And then of course you've got your alerts. So if you have, oh, it's not. So when you're done with every screen, it wants you to um, save or activate. And I think here it's gonna tell me. Oh yeah, see sunrise, sunset. Um, uh, where am I going here? There we go. So save that. 